It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Shannon Gilpin. She's a chief marketing officer and co-founder of Nona's Marketing. Nona's is Shannon backward. <laughs> and the other person she co-founded was, was her amazing father, who's going to be the next mayor of Phoenix, yes, Arizona. Yes, How cool is, is that? Uh, very cool. <laughs> My gosh. I uh, couldn't imagine having a dad that's the mayor of Phoenix, Arizona. Shannon Gilpin is a co-founder and chief marketing officer of Nona's Marketing, a social media marketing agency located in Phoenix, Arizona. She started the company in 2013 as a freshman in college with her father, Moses. Shannon specializes in portrait and branding photography, working with photographers such as Annie Leibovitz. Since then, they have grown the agency to serve over 50 professionals like dentists, lawyers, plastic surgeons, through social media content creation and management, Facebook advertising photography. Thank you so much for coming Thank on the show. Thank you for having me. She, she does over 15 dental offices in my backyard. One, just uh, two dentists like a mile up the street. Um, you're amazing. The problem we dentists have is we went to school for eight years because we want to do surgery on teeth. We want right. to do root canals, fillings, and crowns. And then you graduate and they tell you, oh, oh, you got to own a business too. <laughs> And they're like, I don't own a business. I, I'm a dentist. I do right. surgery and operatory all day. But they can't do their root canals, fillings, and crowns if they don't have patients. Right. And they, uh, even though they have eight years of college and they're a doctor, you have a degree in digital marketing I from do. Arizona State University, which is the number one university in the universe and all the parallel universes, too, because <laughs> uh, that's where I went. It is. It is. And I can say it yeah. profoundly because that school... I mean, when you went to the computer lab, or, or say, say you had a problem with uh, statistics and you go mm -hmm. to the, the statistics deal, I mean, there, there'd be like 20 PhDs yeah. on standby. If you graduate from ASU and you don't know what you're doing, it's all you, buddy. That's the, true. The resources are incredible. But um, there was none of those classes in dental school. Yeah. So, so if a dentist just looked at you, and I, I know how my homies think. He's just going to say, Shanna, I just, I just want another 10 patients a right. month. Is that doable? Yeah, I mean it, it's a social strategy. You know, you gotta you gotta come together and have a digital marketing strategy um, for what you're gonna do. It's not just posting. It's not just boosting. You know, a post on Facebook uh, to any audience. You have to be very specific in your social media marketing and how you create a strategy for that to serve your patient, to serve your audiences on social media. So absolutely, it's 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 very possible, um, and with the right tools and with the right strategy, you can absolutely do it. So your 15 dental offices right here in Phoenix, in my backyard, um, do they do they tell you they want different strategies or did they all want the same strategy? Absolutely. So they they are owned they part of their ownership is with a, a management company, but they're all individual offices. They all have their very own unique personas. You mean they're all part of a of a, a DSO or a, a parent company? Y kind of. They 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 have a, a management company that helps come in and. What, what's the name of that management? Company? Uh, Practice Strategies. Practice Strategies. Yes. Ryan, do we do I know them? Practice strategies. I'll send you. Uh, so find, find the link and uh, to practice strategies. Yeah. And where, where's their corporate office? At? They, I think they're. I believe they're in Phoenix. They're they're kind of all over it because they serve. They have offices all over the valley. Practices all over the valley. So they're all over. But each of those dental offices are unique. They have very unique demographics. Is the is the owner a woman hygienist? I don't believe she's a hygienist. She's a she's a woman. Her and her husband own it, and they own a yep. stake in each. Yep. I, she's my, I've been trying to, you tell her, I've been trying to get her on the show uh, for, this is like a 1,010. She was like the first person I contacted. Really? She is a genius. She is. She is. And that that's amazing that of everyone she could have picked, she picked you. I mean, th this, I'm pretty sure, who I think she's an RDH. I don't think she's a DDS. But it, yeah, she was a hygienist for like 10 years. And she thought, these dentists don't know how to run a business. So as a hygienist, Arizona is one of the very few states where a non-dentist can own a dental office. Really? So she just said, hell, I'm going to start my own. If the dentist won't do what I say, yeah. I'm just going to... But anyway, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. Um, and you so can slap me at any time <laughs> if I interrupt. No, no. But, but because of this, you know, all of these dentist offices are unique in their demographics and in, in their clientele. You know, some are in areas um, that cater to, you know, an older generation in a retirement community. Some are in Ahwatukee and they, they cater to young families. So 
With that, we have very specific strategies for each office, different content that we create, different ways we go about it. Um, so it is unique in that respect. It's not just you know copy and paste to all of them. Um, we, we've developed strategies for each of them. So the difference between me and you, since you're, uh, you're actually uh, younger than uh, three of my children, um, um, you know, that, you know, my generation came from phone book, direct mail. Right. Your generation came from Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff like that. When you do your marketing, is it all just new age digital marketing? I mean, do you do, do you be even believe in direct mail? I've, I mean, I know the yellow page is dead. I'll, I'll see the yellow right. pages. I mean, I, I've seen, I've seen, you know, fl the the mailers work in in respects. But when when you look at it now, the seven billion people in the world, two billion active users on social media every day, um, and that that is just something right there. You know, I heard. Back in 2007, when social media started coming around, it's just a fad. It's just another thing the younger generation will use, but it's now become a very strong business tool that even the older generations are going towards, um, especially Facebook. It is, is um, attracting a much larger, older demographic than you know Instagram and all of that. So, you know, the, uh, the owner of Facebook is uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Yes. And his dad's a dentist. I didn't know that. Yeah, he has sat in that chair three different times. Really? And one time he brought, um, he's, uh, we're both a bald dentist and we both have four kids. The only difference is his son uh, started Facebook <laughs> and my son is currently serving prison time for uh, a bad Facebook ad. And no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Favorite. But he is, but he is. He, he's a, his name's Ed Zuckerberg. Wow. And, um, but... That's amazing because um, Facebook um, is lar has more people than all the population of the Southern Hemisphere plus India. Yeah. Um, I think Christ it has more users than Christianity. <laughs> so it's it's literally, he's literally, Mark Zuckerberg is literally the CEO of the Southern Hemisphere. Yes. I mean, he's a, it's a new deal. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you think this uh, scandal stuff is going to do, I mean, I haven't. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, you I watched I watched the the testimony and all of that, and oftentimes the questions were interesting. You know, I feel like they didn't they didn't know when they were asking him questions. It wasn't really relevant. But one of the big takeaways I got from him, his testimony, in you know, specific to targeting and in the type of information they have on you, is when you have anything you subscribe to, whether it be TV, whether it be podcasts, whether it be social media you're paying in some way, whether it's monetary, whether it's through ads. Um, and with the targeting information they have, they really want to give you the best ads that are relevant to you. So I hope, you know, coming out of this, I think they may be a little bit stricter with data here and there, how, how they give it. But I hope that, they, you know, they still allow this targeting information because otherwise you're just going to start seeing ads because you still have to pay for Facebook in some way. That's how they make their money. But you'll start seeing ads that aren't relevant. And I think it's really important to be specific with your targeting and put it in front of the people that are going to want to see it and are going to benefit from it. Yeah, when I watch those hearings, I mean, those... There's, there's no way they could regulate uh, Mark because you could just tell by the questions that those old, I yeah. mean, they were all like a bunch of 70, yeah. 80 year old men looked like they were complaining yeah. in the lunchroom at a nursing home yes. uh, that, you know, they didn't have enough macaroni and cheese. They're, they're, <laughs> they're clueless. But, um, but I, I love it. And I, I talked to all four of my boys about it. And we all agreed. Like, I love the fact that like when I go to Google and I start typing in a name, mm -hmm. Google knows I'm looking for a dentist. Yes. And the first deal is always DDS right after the yeah. name. And uh, Greg, I was talking to my son Greg and, and Eric, um, they love the fact that they know everything about them. So when they're doing weird searches, in fact, Ryan, I was uh, think it's funny, like when I see a joke on Reddit and I want to cut and paste that joke, I only get three words into the joke and it prompts up, oh, that joke is on Reddit. I mean, they know oh. that I love yeah. Reddit. Three, four words into the joke, yep. Google's like, I know what he wants to do. Yep. He wants to find that joke on Reddit. Yep. Um, so uh, so what percent, um, um, back to um, the dentist wanting uh, um, 
10 more uh, new patients a mm -hmm. month. Do you mostly work with them on Facebook or do you do other forms of digital marketing? So we, we focus on social media and I think it's important when you know you, you start developing a social media strategy as a dentist practice, you look at your patient demographic. You, if, if those are the patients you want, if you want to attract a different audience. And then from there, I think it's important to look at where they're living on social media, whether that be Facebook, whether that be Instagram, whether that be Twitter. If you're looking to attract an older generation, even younger generations are still present on Facebook, but Facebook is where you know you go to get that older um, demographic. Whereas if you're looking to target First young- First of all, what's your definition of older? And I want to warn you, I'm 55. No. <laughs> so it better be over 55. It Please better don't. be over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, otherwise you're going to call me an old man. No, 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 I'm no, already no. short, fat, and bald. Don't call me old. I would say, I mean, I still think, you know, for, I'm not saying older, but 65 plus are becoming very active on Facebook. But Really? So if, I, I wouldn't have thought that. So if you yeah. if you do a lot of implants and dentures and partials right. and you want grandma and grandpa, mm -hmm. you're saying grandma and grandpa are on they Facebook. They are. My grandma is super active on Facebook. It, it's, it's amazing. They're becoming much more active, but there still is that generation of my age and, you know, 35 to 55, very active on Facebook as well. So, so Facebook's older, and is that why um, Mark bought Instagram? Because yes. uh, the rumor is that when uh, little kids noticed that their grandmother was on Facebook, that they all jumped off and went to Instagram. It's, it's partially because of that, but that's where the younger generation lives, and mainly, predominantly, females live on Instagram, too. Um, Fem female, Instagram's more female? It's more female. There, like, do you know the percent? I think it's like... It's not by much. It's probably, I think it's like 55 or 65 are female. But um, on the other hand, Twitter is predominantly male. Um, again, not by much. I think it's like 50. It's like not, not big differences in the numbers. But YouTube is the most male. Yes. Yes, it um, is. I, uh, how, how, how male have you heard YouTube is? Oh, Again, I think it's like 65 to 70. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it is predominantly male as well. So yeah. those two, and you know, Twitter is drifting to be more of a news-based platform. They've even changed like their categories in the app store. It's not social media, it's news. So they're, they're trying to um, become more of a news-based platform. So it is really important when you're developing a social strategy to look at your patient. Did you say it's a news platform or a fake news platform? <laughs> what, what percent of it's fake news? Yeah. I, I'm I'm literally I, I I've read some really shocking things about um those news stories that some like over eighty percent of all people who forward a news article on social media yeah. never even click through to read it. Yeah, they I mean So just they're, they're just clickbait headlines. It's it's a lot of it is clickbait headlines, but you have to be careful again when creating content and ads that you share headlines that aren't clickbait. Um but but there is a lot of clickbait and you know there's like the onion and those satire type of you know articles that's very present on twitter as well but there are a lot of you know when you look at your top trending hashtag top trending news stories there's a lot of credible news sources on there um sharing their news yeah well, I, I really like twitter and then finally uh the wall street's liking it now it's finally the stock's yeah. going on i mean it came out at like 40 went to 20 yeah and now i think it's it's oh, back up their ipo price see I, I i have a different dental office because um i um I like the, I love being a general family dentist mm -hmm. um, because um, I wouldn't want to do root canals all day right. or just kids all day, you know. So if someone just said, I don't want to target, I just I just want more more people. I, I mean, I look at it as an emergency room. I don't care if it's a crying kid, mm -hmm. dad with a toothache, mom mm -hmm. broke her, grandma broke her denture. Um, but but put list the social media ones that are best return on investment mm -hmm. to lower and then where you draw the line that you don't go underneath the line. I would say for dentist offices, Facebook definitely. That's um, number one. I would say that that's number one because you have so much you can do with it because they own Instagram, because they own Messenger and WhatsApp. There's so many other different platforms that they own. I would say Facebook. Um, I would say Instagram as well, but one not to forget about is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is growing a lot in regards to social content and the people present on there looking looking at the content new to see articles videos all of that and you can now advertise on linkedin too um you know doing specific targeted ads and whatnot so linkedin's growing as a credible source as a social media platform um and i definitely think it's good to be on there as a professional office. well you know um 
the the best thing about being 55 is you really don't see anything new. You've seen every rodeo yeah. once or twice. Like I lived through the 94 to 2000, March of 2000 bubble market, mm -hmm. then it popped. And now we're, we're back, you know, now it's 2018. We're right back there. But in the 2004 bubble, it was Microsoft because Microsoft bought LinkedIn yep. and it bought Skype. But back in 94, 2000, it was Microsoft, Intel, Dell, and Cisco. Mm -hmm. And then it all imploded. So now we're back with Thing, uh, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, uh, Netflix. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is the only one that's in the second bubble. And, and whereas, um, whereas basically Apple only has one revenue stream selling hardware. Right. Uh, Facebook only has one revenue stream selling ads. Google and YouTube only have one revenue stream selling mm -hmm. ads. Um, Amazon has two, mm -hmm. cloud storage and, mm -hmm. and their retail business. But Microsoft has like seven. Yeah. And I noticed ever since they bought Skype and ever since they bought LinkedIn, it's getting better, 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 mm -hmm. better. And what I liked about LinkedIn is everybody on LinkedIn has a job. Yeah. <laughs> and has dental benefits. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. I mean, you, everybody that's ever come in from LinkedIn works for Intel, right? you know, Boeing. They, they, they all have great jobs. Exactly. With great benefits. And that's why it's a social media platform not to discredit. You know, you should absolutely keep that in mind when you're doing social media marketing. Um, but again, depending on family practice, you, you know, you want to attract all. I think that's a great place because, again, yeah, people have jobs there. Facebook is where, you know, everybody kind of lives. Um, but you know, moms, Instagram, and I would, I would definitely use those three together, develop a social. Those three, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I would focus on those initially. YouTube's a great, again, a great platform, especially if you, you're creating consistent content for YouTube and you're sharing it, you know, Google has the algorithm to push it up. Um, and YouTube's a great, great platform. But the only thing is I find hard sometimes is dentist offices don't have it's not that they don't have the time to market on it because if they hire an um, an agency or whatever it may be, but you need that dentist to sit down and you know film something, and oftentimes they don't want to or they they say they don't have the time. So it's I find it sometimes a little more difficult, but it is a platform that I I definitely suggest. It's just harder to create content for. So the, you can't get into dental school, med school, or law school unless you're an introvert geek who sat in the library for eight years. So a lot of my friends, they actually cringe at drawing attention to themselves. Right. So when they sit there and say, oh, you should take a selfie and post it, they're just like, ah, yeah. this doesn't sit right. You know yep. what I mean? I mean, they're, they're the, I don't know where Kim Kardashian is, but they, <laughs> dentists, it's MDs, and lawyers would be the exact opposite of, what is it, Kane West or? Kanye West, yeah. Kanye West, yeah. yeah. They yeah. just don't like to draw no, attention to themselves. And, the, and they really don't. And that's why, I mean, even talking about photography and branding photography with the dentist, when I go in, I try to focus on them doing what they do best. So I like to go in and take photos of them working. And that way they don't, you know, have to pose or do anything like that. And you can really capture them in their landscape and their environment. Um, but it is, I mean, they definitely cringe if I ask them to do a tip video. And that's why I like to include other parts of the team in the office, whether it be the hygienist, the dental assistants, um, everybody, because you're seeing a lot of them too as patients when you come in, it's not just the doctor. So if that's one of the things I suggest, if you have a problem, you know, being in front of the camera, use other parts of your team, but also understand that, you know, it's, it's great to, to show your face because your patients want to see you. They really do. Now, um, she made a landing page just for this podcast. It's http colon slash slash dentist dot known as marketing dot com. Mm -hmm. So known as is Shannon backwards, yeah. which is so funny when I saw that because, you know, with the IRS stuff and all that, it said, oh, you got to separate your practice from the building. Then I said, what's what should we name the real estate company to hold your dental office? And I said, Fran backwards. So it's an <laughs> So we both came to the same yeah. conclusion. So it's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash dentist dot known as marketing dot com. Okay, what are my homies going to find if they go to um, dentist dot known as marketing dot com? So we have a special a special offer for them, for the listeners of Dentistry Uncensored. We offer um, content creation and content management on social platforms uh, for $700 a month 
but we're offering a 30% discount for your listeners, um, thanking them for you know watching me here today with you. Um, and I can kind of go into the details. That we really develop a strategy for them on their social media, start creating content, personalized content for them, um, and have a strategy to share it and manage it in a way that will get them seen and have a digital presence. So instead of 700 a month, it's 500? No, yes. 500 a month? Yes. Now, now um, does that include buying Facebook ads or Google ads? No, no, that's separate. So we, if they're interested in ads, um, we do it differently. We have like an ads management setup. So when I do my Facebook ads, again, you have to have a strategy when you're doing Facebook ads. I see people just boost posts and you know boost content. That's not a strategy that's not targeting people well. So with that, we develop a funnel which includes ads, landing pages, um, email templates. It's really developed to help them take those individuals from con- uh, awareness set to a purchase set, um, pushing them down that funnel. Okay, so you said ads, landing pages, and awareness, the funnel, <laughs> going down into what? What's that, the opposite of so, awareness? Um, what comes out of awareness? Pr- purchase. Purchase? Yeah. So we start, we on the awareness set, we have ads set up. Okay, well, I got yeah. one question first. Um, so what do, what do you think is better, um, getting getting organic growth or buying ads? I, think, I mean, earning it or buying it? Well, I think they're, they're hand in hand. If people are seeing your ads and they go to your social accounts and you don't have anything, social media is now seen as a form of credibility. People go to your social accounts to check you out prior to you know purchasing anything. 41% of consumers and engage with your social account in some way prior to purchasing. Um, so it's a say what percent? Forty one percent. Forty one percent do what? They they see your account. They see your your social media prior to purchasing. They check it out. They they've engaged. You've had an ad, so they're seeing your brand consistently prior to purchasing. Um, and it's a way for them to see that you're a credible business. People people like to check it out, whether it be from Yelp to Facebook. Um, but it's definitely a hand-in-hand thing. I, I suggest organic content and ads. Um, it, it really depends, you know, if you have organic content going out consistently, you know, have somebody in your office, an office manager do it, I would suggest ads as a supplement. Um, but if you don't have either, I definitely suggest doing them both. You know, it's funny, I just um, read a deal. Um, there's one of my heroes, um, Every year he puts out a list of the 10 companies he thinks are going to go out of business. Mm-hmm. Uh, for next year, he picked Yelp. It was really? on his list. And he started going through the burn rate and the cash rate. I mean, uh, um, and what's funny is when you go on Dental Town, which thanks for joining yes, Dental yes, Town. Yes, I did. Um, it's funny because if you do a search for Yelp, mm-hmm. every thread on Yelp is, this is, the, I, you know, it, it's all negative. It's, well, yeah. I don't think I've ever met a dentist that said, I really like Yelp. Well, Yelp's algorithm is, we've struggled with it for a long time with, with our customers um, because with Facebook and other platforms where they have reviews, you can manage your reputation. Yeah, yeah, but no one's, I, I've never read anybody complain about a Facebook review or a Google right. review. Right. But there's, there's a thousand complaints about Yelp reviews. Well, because Yelp, so let's say you have you have a patient and you say, go leave me a Yelp review. If they've never been on Yelp before, the likelihood that their, their good review is going to show up is slim to none. Whereas those active Yelp users that really like to leave negative reviews, it's going to show up. And so most times you see the negative reviews more so than others, um, and their algorithm is just all messed up. They, they really should work on it but you know i could see them going Hopefully out of business they'll go out of business yeah. we, can all, <laughs> we can all cross our fingers say a prayer um okay um so the c- credibility is also i hear him calling that social proof social proof yes so that was um that was the one thing that um so ed zuckerberg whose son is mark zuckerberg mm-hmm. He, one of the things um, we always talk about is in uh, healthcare, it's like 93% of all the appointments are made by mom. Right. Uh, dad, um, I mean, when dad's coming out, if you say, hey, I'm doing your daughter's insurance form. Do you know her birthday? No idea. It's like, really? You don't know your daughter's birthday? What about her social security number? No. And, and mom, mom just, birthday, social security number, right. insurance number. Um, and I mean, what, half the kids are raised without a dad? I mean, yeah. yeah. So, so we always want to target mom. And, um, and Ed said, you know, one, the most important thing is when they come in, try to get mom to uh, check in on mm-hmm. Facebook. Yeah. 
Because then all of her women friends say, oh, Amy's going to yes. this dentist. Yes. And, uh, and that's a social proof. So that's the- a social proof. Leaving, you know, if they leave any reviews on Facebook, um, take advantage of whatever social proof you can get because people will see their peers on Facebook, see that you trust them. And that's, you know, that's a great way of getting clients. I think it was 90 90% of you know referrals, social proof referrals on social media, um, converted. You know, so when you ninety percent, it was ninety percent, ninety percent of of people sharing, you know, social proof, whatever it's reviews, you know, checking in, converted into referrals. Wow. So when people see that you're sharing, you know, you trust this this dentist office, this business, this brand, that means I must, you know, I must trust it too because you're my friend, you're my peer, and you're you're making a point of sharing it with us. So I always suggest checking and I always suggest having, you know, an offer too. Um, you can incentivize it a little bit, you know, because people, people Incentivize are them to leave a review? To leave a review. On you know, Facebook or Google? Which one's, which one's more valuable? I would suggest both. Um, Google's, Google's a powerhouse. People go to Google and they search things. Um, but Facebook is too because, again, like I said, they're using social media as a cre- credibility form. Um, and with that, you know, that you can't delete reviews. You can't change them. So those are the real reviews you see on Facebook. And so, I mean, all of my businesses have, you know, five-star review, four-star review maybe, but they're all, those are real reviews. So I would suggest try to get both. Um, Google it, on Facebook? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, dentistry is a game of trust, just like, um, I grew up with five sisters. I played Barbie dolls till I was 12. I don't know what a spark plug looks like. I remember one time this guy was saying, you hear that? That's your lifters. To this day, I don't know what a lifter is. So when my engine light comes on, for me, it's an idiot light. Yeah. No. I mean, if the guy comes out and says, it's, you need a new battery, I believe him. Or I, I, it's, it's all yeah. about trust. Right. And when the uh, air conditioner guy comes here and he says, you know, you're hoping it's a shot of Freon. And he mm-hmm. says, no, you need a new air conditioner. It, it's a game of trust. Yeah. So when the dentist tells you you have four cavities, how would you? How you, would you know? You trust them. You. Yeah, so yeah. it's all. So it's all trust. So, um, so the is the reviews is helps with the game of trust. It does. It does. And you know, because dentistry, I mean, people are scared to go to the dentist. You know, we, we deal with that a lot, um, and they're worried about you know costs and everything. So when you see those reviews, those positive reviews that this is a trusted dentist, this dentist is going to treat me like family and take care of me, that that's important to them. You just mentioned fear. I got some good news for you guys. They just, uh, I was talking to an expert on this, and um, the silent generation before us, their fear for the dentistry was off the charts. I mean, when I got out of school 30 years ago, sometimes grandma and grandpa would just be shivering in the chair. The baby boomers, half are scared. But it's amazing the fear among millennials of the dentist has plummeted mm-hmm. because all they knew was, you know, they had nitrous oxide and Visalign. Right. They, they never, like, like my mom and her brothers back then in the day, I mean, um, um, I mean they, they, didn't, they, they had teeth pulled without anesthetic. Oh, my gosh. So it, it was, you know. That, was, that's a fear, so, yeah. So it's really plummeting down, but scare of cost is still huge. Yeah, it is. It really is. And so, I mean, it's... Having that trusted dentist that's not going to swindle you is important, and, and social proof is one way of getting that out there. So, so what are you, what are you doing for these dentists in, in Phoenix? What what are, what are you doing for them? So we do social mainly social content and creation, so organic content. Um, we also do Facebook ads, and and I do branding photography for them as well. And what does what, what branding photography mean? So that can be a variety of things, but what I like to do is I go into their office, I take photos of their team, I take photos of them working with patients, um, performing the treatments that they want to highlight. I call it personalized stock photos, basically. So instead of having to use um, photos you find on the internet, you know, it's really a way of putting a human face on social media that this is my hygienist and this is a really high quality photo of them working and you can use brand stock photos for anything. Um, you can create graphics with them, you can do videos, but I think it's really important because I think it's like 70% of people engage better. Not, I mean, obviously you need to have photos and videos in your social media. That is just one thing. People are not gonna engage with 
just text. They won't. And so you have to have photos, but then 70% of those photos with a human face that you recognize get higher engagement rates. So that's what I like to do for branding photography is go in and show the hygienist, show the dentist, and that way people become more familiar with them, more familiar with their brand and them as a person um, rather than just some stock dentist. <laughs> So what I do is I just go to bradpitt.com <laughs> and I just use Brad's pictures. There you go. Is that, do you recommend that? Yeah. You know. And then people it, come it, in and say, dude, what happened? <laughs> Did you fall out of a car? Um, well, it's definitely a way to attract moms. <laughs> it's definitely a way to attract moms. Um, so is, um, so do you, 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 text would be the lowest engagement, photos yes. would be better, and videos would be the best? Yes. And do you do videos too? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we'll go in and get videos of dentists working. We'll get videos like an office tour. Um, it really depends on the campaign and the what we're focusing on in that month or that week, whatever it may be. But we take photos very specifically. It's not just we go in and take photos. Um, so there's always a specific reason. But we do do videos as well. And videos get videos are going nowhere. They get the highest engagement. People have short attention spans and so when they're scrolling through a feed if they see something that moves kind of like you know the squirrel thing um they, they'll stop and watch uh so i highly suggest if you can take videos even if it's on your iphone um and even with live video how you mentioned dentists are afraid of you know talking and being in front of video i was at one of our offices the other day and i mentioned to the dentist you know if you guys have a chance to do a treatment coming up for live video i'd be happy to send over some tips and you know how to do that and he was really excited about it um, just because it beats the algorithm on Facebook. Uh, it will always, always be at the top of the news feed. It will show it to all of your audience because Facebook wants live video to be the next big thing. So if you can do video, do it. <laughs> so now, how long do you think is the optimum length of a video? So it used to be short, you know, because we have a short attention span, but now it's, it's growing to be a few different things. So there, there's your Instagram stories or Snapchat. Um, that's really short, and it's something that you can just throw out there really quick. Um, there's a longer, um, like a live video, which is kind of, you know, that can be whatever length in time. Generally, live videos go for, I mean, some people do them for hours if they're doing long things, but, you know, 10 minutes. But they say, you know, the longer, longer videos probably, like, three to five minutes, that's what's doing better now because people three are- Three to five minutes? I'd say three to five minutes. It used to be like 30 seconds. That was your optimal time. But now people are watching these longer videos because it's supplemented by live videos, by Instagram stories, by Facebook stories now. So having both of those, using both of those in tandem it is gonna be beneficial. Now, if you say you did a live video, mm -hmm. um, as soon as you done live video, is it gone or does it or does it archive? No, it, it, it saves. It's, it it's, saves. Yeah, it's it's on there. But okay. what I suggest and what I told my my dentist the other day, when you're filming live videos, film on airplane mode. Um, that way, it's still going to be a live video, but you can watch it prior to it going live, um, just in case you said anything that you didn't want to say or whatever because live videos often you're so caught up in the moment caught up in what you're doing caught up in people commenting and watching um that you can you know make a mistake so i i, I suggest putting it on airplane mode prior to doing it huh we should have live video this i know right i don't know he right. might be in. we, we should have we should have done the live video and, and um so you this first time you mentioned snapchat so um do you think snap is something dentists should get involved in or i Snapchat, more... I, think, I think initially when I started working with dentists, I wanted it because Snapchat was big. But because of their big algorithm change, Instagram stories have taken over, um, especially with my generation. They are all about Instagram stories right now. Snapchat is not doing so well, so I don't suggest using Snapchat. Um, it's another way to have those short videos, but it's I don't know how much longer Snapchat's going to be Well, around. rumor has it, I won't say where it came from, that... Um, the whole mission of Instagram right now is to kill Snapchat. I, I mean, mean they, it, it's like the Ollie Frazier fight. They're, I mean, they're, they're, they're going at it toe to toe. The, I, I've heard that Facebook has um, implemented any unique thing that Snapchat, mm -hmm. but you keep saying Snapchat stories. So Instagram stories In, are- Instagram stories. What, what, 
What's an Instagram story? So on the top of your news feed on Instagram, there's like a little circle and it's it's the people just post like little videos or photos or boomerangs, um, but it's just a short little thing. Yeah. So those right there. So if you click on like that, that's an Instagram story. So it's more than a post? It's more than a post. It's shorter, and it goes away within... Oh, it's within, like, a, like yeah. a picture PowerPoint thing? It, but it can be video. Um, Instagram stories have the capability to be live video, too. Uh, it can be a boomerang, which is like this little, like, GIF. Thing. It, it's, so there's a lot oh. of options for Instagram stories, but um, you can see the analytics oh, on this. Oh, it's McCall Dentures, my buddy McCall. Um. But the thing is, Instagram stories are similar to what Snapchat is in itself. Um, people will post, you know, little videos or photos that go away within 24 hours. It's the same thing, just it's called. So is Instagram stories more um, engagement than just an Instagram post? Uh, it can be. People watch it like they watch Snapchat. It's replacing Snapchat in that respect, but what's cool about Instagram stories is you can tag locations, tag people, tag hashtags, and so that increases the visibility of that story and increases the chance that new individuals and new audience will see it. Huh, interesting. And um, so you, you talk about organic and um, Facebook ads and Google ads go mm -hmm. hand in hand. Um, if someone's paying you $500 a month to manage the account and do the organic, mm -hmm. um, how, much, how much do you recommend on a budget for buying ads? For buying ads, that and how I would start with that is you're going to have your, your ads. And do you do that? Yeah. They give you the money, then you buy them for them? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it depends. You know, when you're targeting, there's so many options with Facebook ads targeting um, and so many options for audiences and all of that. I would start small. Um, test your audiences, have um, A-B testing, all of that. But really, once you have a well-performing ad and ad funnel, you can invest as much money as you want because it'll, you'll get more, more leads, more clicks, whatever it may be. But I always suggest to start small um, and, and get bigger as, as your ads are performing better and they're more relevant to your audience. Um, then, as I notice, I, I went to... Uh you know, we use on Dental Towns the um, computerized bulletin board service, mm -hmm. which started in 1970, which all the scientists use. So if you wonder what the scientists are using and invented the, the uh, internet and all that stuff, it's all the computerized bulletin board system and forums. Um, the, the, the endless news feed that started with emails and then went to MySpace, Friendster, Twitter, Instagram. That's fun. Mm -hmm. It's entertaining. It's like scrolling through TV. Mm -hmm. But you can't learn how to do a root canal or learn how to do social media. Right. But I noticed one reoccurring theme with dentists on the social media. So one of the categories is marketing. And then you open up marketing. One of them is website. One of them is um, social media. When they, get a, when they get a bad review, oh my God, it's like they mentally implode. And I'm like, dude, at my Thanksgiving family dinner, Half the family's crazy. I mean, don't, I mean, just, I just tell them, picture your craziest uncle <laughs> saying it. I mean, yeah. so uh, do, you, do you ever have to walk them off the ledge or do they call you well, up and I'm ready to jump or yeah, how, I how mean, do you handle Vaker? Luckily, view? our dentist, we have a wonderful management team that, you know, we work together with um, that they, they help with that, but they, they handle, I mean, they take care of connecting with, with the clients, with the patients, um, but they do. The, some of these patients are crazy. We've had instances where patients would create new Facebook accounts to because we'd block them and they would leave new negative reviews. So people are crazy and they will, if they're mad, they'll go out of their way to- At to least 20% of the planet is completely crazy. <laughs> And, and, they're, and they're, they're your own family, they're your own... Right, you know. and, but what I would suggest, if you don't have a management team in place to help take care of that or a social media team, you know, make sure that you're monitoring it and make sure you reach out to them. I would suggest never deleting the reviews um, because that shows up bad on your part. That shows that you're hiding something. Um, so always reach out to them and you know, make sure it's visible and, and take care of it as much as you can. And once you know, you've handled the situation, ask them to either update the review or you know, change it, whatever it may be. Um, but I would never delete it or try to hide it because that just shows that you're, you know, you're not trustworthy and that's- Well, well my, I, a lot of the question, um, I don't know how to say, uh, the, I'm trying to say this, uh, rated uh, PG, 
My dad used to always say, if you stir poop, it'll make it stink. Yeah. So if I get a bad review, I, I, I don't reply or say anything. Mm -hmm. Other people try to go in and, um, and explain everything. Mm -hmm. And then one dentist got sued because he started explaining her treatment. Oh, no. And then, and then he got flagged for a HIPAA. Yeah. Deal. Well, don't, no, no explaining, no explaining to the audience what you've done. Reach out to the patient. That you know, you don't have to explain yourself on social media. Um, you want to make that connection with the patient, and you know, handle it through them, handle it discreetly. But you don't, you don't want to hide anything. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and don't take it so personal. Just don't take yeah. it so personal. Yeah. And also, I, I've seen some vicious attacks um, locally. Uh, when I talked to the dentist, it's like she wanted a refund, and he didn't give her a refund. Yeah. So now she, she's got a crazy lady, blah, 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 blah. And you know what? Um, Walmart, Walmart, 7% returns. Really? And there's not a dentist in America that has 1% returns. Yeah. And I even had, you know, I've been doing this 30 years. I had a man one time said it was the worst dentures he'd ever had in his life, wanted his money back, and I said, okay, well, well, give me, I'll, here's the yeah. check, but give my dentures back. Oh, no. And he was wearing them. And I'm like, okay, so they're the worst dentures, but I noticed that your old dentures <laughs> are not in your mouth. Those are the dentures I made, and you want your money back. But my, my walnut brain goes to this guy still alive. In fact, I saw him at Safeway not too long ago. I, I think he's like 90 years old. Oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't want some guy 30 years living five blocks from my office telling everybody right. that I made the work, you know, I mean, so, um, so I think a lot of this would be prevented by just, they want a refund, they want a refund, and, and Walmart, no questions asked warranty. Mm -hmm. And you know who invented that? His wife, Helen. They were in a small town, um, Bentonville, Arkansas, and they got back from church and uh, Helen said, uh, yeah, the lady at church I talked to in the parking lot and she bought a pair of shoes at your deal and the heel fall off and she took it back there and you said it wasn't your deal. You know what, this is a family of five, they're never going back to you. So yeah. we went from 5,000 people to 4,995. Yeah. And Sam said, well, it's not my problem. And Helen said, it's your problem. Yeah. So he was the guy who pushed back the no questions asked warranty. Oh. Then when the guy came back to sell him 10 new pair of shoes, he said, oh, by the way, this one. So he pushed the warranty up the supply chain, mm. which then turned to quality. Because once the manufacturer realized you send someone a defective deal, they're right. going to send it back. Yeah. And rework is twice the cost mm -hmm. of original work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so um, I, I think if they gave more refunds, and, and now I know a friend who's just sick uh, because he didn't refund, you know, he got in this fight. Well, then she called the Arizona State Board, or the Arizona, oh, no. yeah, the Arizona State Board Dental Examiners. So now he's had to hire an attorney. He's gonna have to block off the day. He's like, he's like all worked up it's and probably not sleeping. And it's like, dude, yeah. you could have just given her her money back. Yeah. And look at yourself. You're not happy. You're yeah. miserable. And financially, when it's all over, it, oh, he's going to cost gonna more. Be, oh, yeah, absolutely. So on. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so you, um, is social, is all what you do, how is that affected by their website? I mean, are you trying to drive people through social media to yeah. his website? Yes. Do you evaluate their website? We do, and, and luckily the, the practices we work with, we work very closely with the web designer. Um, but we do evaluate the websites. That's one of the services we offer. We can create websites, um, but most of the time we come in and they have a website in place. We give suggestions based on what would be better. We would love to have, you know, have each practice have a blog and have content going out from that because when we link it back, you know, when we're posting articles on tips or health tips for the summer or, you know, how to take care of your braces or anything like that, um, we would love to push them back to their website. But oftentimes, you know, they don't have a blog. They claim that they don't have the time. So we do evaluate websites. We do, you know, suggest changes to optimize it better um, because it's, it's beneficial. We're always linking um, any of the posts back to the website. And what do my homies want to talk to you? What, what is the best way to contact you? Oh, uh, you can email me at shannon at nonasmarketing.com. Um, that's, that's the best way. <laughs> shannon at nonasmarketing.com. Mm -hmm. And Nona's is just Shannon back. Right. So if you, if you can't spell Nona's, if, if you can spell Shannon, you can. <laughs> if you can spell Shannon, S-H-A-N-N-O-N at nonasmarketing.com. And when most people call you, um, oh, but back to the blog, um, you said videos, uh, three to five minutes. How many words should a blog be? How many paragraphs? How long should it take to read? I would say 300 to 500 words. Include photos if you can. If you're doing like a tip 
blog post, just break it up by numbers or bullet points. Something easy to read, people can read it quickly, um, but it gets the point across. And it, you know, at the bottom of the blog post, you know, if you're interested in learning more, come visit us, or you know, call us today, or anything like that. Um, so it's always linking it back to you. Okay, I know my homies. I've been a dentist for 30 years. I know dentists. These guys were at the Arizona State Dental Convention mm -hmm. any time over the last 30 years, probably five, 10 years ago. They walked mm -hmm. by a booth. They said, give me your credit card, give me five grand, and we'll build you a website. And they haven't even looked at their website yeah. since. I mean, when I, go to, when I go to dentist websites, I go to them every day because when mm -hmm. they send me an email, you know, they'll send me this email and they'll say, thanks, Larry. And I'm like, oh. Are you the only Larry on earth? <laughs> but, but if you see like Larry at smileytube.com, then I'll go take the smileytube, mm -hmm. www, and I'll look at it. Um, if I hit the contact and reply to the contact, mm -hmm. half the time, it's not even, it doesn't even work. Really? Um, I would say a quarter of the time, they don't even have a photo. And um, so I would, I would suggest that, you know, when we were little, this was the yellow pages. I mean, I ask yourself, when's the last time you even looked at your own website? I remember when the iPhone came out and all these dentists had flash pictures mm -hmm. and all that. And they didn't even know on the on an iPhone that those were just black squares. Right. Well, and then if your website isn't optimized mobily, Google pushes it down in rankings now. Um, it flags it. So, you know, having a mobily optimized website that works on your phone, so important. And another thing I'll say, I, I believe there's... Um, Mom makes all the appointments, mm -hmm. and um, I can tell you at 55, it is much harder to see than at 45. So I have the large, so when mm -hmm. they're doing their websites, I mean, so if you're trying to get grandma and grandpa on there on Facebook and you want dentures and implants or whatever, there are websites where you have to take your thumbs and mm -hmm. pull everything apart just to read. If you want implants, um, what, it, what does your website look like when grandma and grandpa, I mean, I, I have the largest iPhone made plus readers and half these dental websites, you're still so using funny. your thumbs to pull it apart. So mm -hmm. uh, um, like, like the boys, they'll send me a joke where it'll be like a square meme and I'll have four things. <laughs> Just instant delete. I mean, uh, I, I can read one square yeah. with one joke. I can't read your little four panel thing. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, so it's really important. So if you're trying to get those Implant cases, mm -hmm. implant supported, larger print. Larger print. Um, yeah. Photos with lots of color, you know. Yeah. So um, so you talked about uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, doing blogs, um, photography. Um, what other questions was I uh, not smart enough to ask? I mean, I think, you know, you covered a lot of it. I think, you know, the next steps is thinking of the future of social media, where it's going to go. Um, and, you know, how I mentioned before, videos are huge and they're not going away. Um, people are going to continually use them. But the other things are, you know, that is big are like messenger bots. So messenger is owned by Facebook. It's, you know, just a quick way to instant message. But now what companies and brands are doing is it's, I relate it to an email subscriber list. So as soon as you opt into this messenger by just responding to it, whether it's an ad or whatever, you're now on their subscription list. So they can send out dental tips every day. Or, you know, you can reach out to these people so you're constantly top of mind. And that is becoming really big with Facebook right now. Um, they're really promoting it. And you can set um, a whole funnel, you know, to have these messages messages go out every day and have, you know, very significant call to actions. Um, and then, you know, how we mentioned mobile. Mobile is 80% of users are looking at websites or are on Facebook, mainly on Facebook or any social media platform on their phone. So if you do not have content or websites mobily optimized, um, definitely fix that <laughs> because people won't look at it. Um, if you had only one dollar to spend on digital ads mm -hmm. um, and you had to split it between Facebook and Google how, how would you split it I would split it on Facebook I think I what, what percent would you do Facebook what percent mm. would you do Google ads I mean, yeah Google no I mean so we personally don't do Google SEO and that type of stuff so I know Facebook better so I would put a larger percentage towards Facebook because of the targeting it's crazy and you know you can do targeting based on demographics, based on jobs, based on where they live, all of that. But you can also do is um, custom audiences. So you can take your patient 
list, ex export it, and then upload the Excel um, into Facebook, and you can send an ad to them to remind them to schedule their biannual dental cleaning. But you can also create lookalike audiences. So say it's you know you have your customer list, and then create an audience with all similar interests, all based in the same location. So I think the targeting and, and the benefits of that on Facebook are immense in the data they have. Um, so I would suggest Facebook. I mean, that's just what I know, what I live and breathe every single day. Um, so I, I would suggest that. You know, it's changing times. I mean, when I was little, you know, if you got caught with um, beer and Jack Daniels, you're okay. <laughs> but with weed, you went to jail. And um, right now, with advertising, you know, this, this podcast doesn't know boundaries. Like, uh, Canada can't do half of what we do. Mm -hmm. In, um, like, Hong Kong, Romania, mm -hmm. if they did anything you're talking about, they'd, go to, they'd lose their license. Yeah. So, so ta uh, marketing and advertising is so taboo. I mean, when I got here 30 years ago, I took a, a full-page ad in the Yellow Pages, and I was one of the early pioneers who went into a retail center instead of a medical dental building. Mm -hmm. And when I would go to the dental meeting at age 25, all the 65-year-olds would say, You're, are you that crazy man next to Safeway? they go, if you had cancer, would you go to the doctor next to Safeway or would you go to the hospital? And I'm like, well, you know, I mean, they just, and, and, and I got a free lunch from the director of the Arizona Dental Association telling me that a full page ad just cheapens the image of dentistry. So it's kind of funny 30 years yeah. later that now that's just, now they were mad at me for taking a full page out of the yellow pages. Now the yellow pages is gone. Yeah. And, um, but, but knowing that it's still taboo, you know, in, in, in so many countries it's illegal mm -hmm. that, you know, the older guys are still taboo. Um, at what age, um, at what age do you start finding dentists uh, more re getting it with marketing and Instagram? Like, like I, I like none of my friends. Mm -hmm would know what Snapchat is or, right. or Instagram or... Well, a lot of the dentists that we work with are younger. Um, you know, they're, they're probably 35 to 50, and they all, I mean, they all see the benefits. Um, they, they really are excited when I come to the office. I'm there to take photos. I'm there to highlight certain things because they understand that that's where their, their audience and their patients are living um, on a day-to-day -day basis, whether, you know, it's they've realized that through experience or, you know, they hear it from everybody in their office. Um, yeah. they're, they're starting to get it more and more. They really are. Yeah, and you know, uh, patient flow equals cash flow, and it's kind of like a fireman. You know, what's weird about firemen is, uh, in their heart, they want a big fire. They want to put out the big fire. Now, no one wants your house to be on fire, but if you want, you know, I mean, a fireman wants a fire. A policeman wants to chase a bad guy. I like emergencies. I like toothaches. I mean, you can't do what you do. When I got out of school 30 years ago, when you looked at overhead, it was 0% was marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and then 15 years out, it was like 3% marketing. I'm amazed. The biggest offices I know, um, the big dogs, they're all spending 5 to 7% of collection mm -hmm. on all this stuff. Look, look, look at an ortho case. I mean, an Invisalign case is 6,500. Mm -hmm. And what is the orthodontist profit margin? Fifty percent. So that they, they don't, they don't, they'd spend five hundred dollars all day long to get. If they knew every time give you five hundred dollars, they get Invisalign cases. They would go borrow a billion dollars. I mean, imagine an ASU football game. You could walk in that stadium, you're an orthodontist, and they said, "Well, you can buy any. Everyone here wants Invisalign." Yeah. I mean, they. I mean, so. Um, it's you know the return on investment. So the first thing you need to know is what is your average new patient worth? Because in an endodontist office, it's 6,500. The average general dentist, it's the same, it's 6,500, but spread out over five years. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to look at your conversion rate. Like, what is your chance that if you get one person from the family, say you get mom in, that you can upgrade that to getting dad in, baby bear, you know, mama yeah. bear, grandma bear. Um, so if you don't know what your new patient average deal is, then you don't know what, what's right for head. Like if you're paying, if you figure out that your Facebook marketing campaign costs you $100 per head, that could be very different in a, a Medicaid clinic where maybe their average new patient is only worth 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. And versus um, an area where the average new patient is worth, I think that the national average is right about, I think it's 388. So um, know your numbers. Um, 
It was just an honor and a privilege that you came Thank by the you. house today. Absolutely. And um, and I can vouch for in my backyard. There's 15 amazing dentists, yes. great dentists, high-end dentists. So she definitely knows dental. Thank you so much Thank for coming by the house Thank you for having me. Today. It's been wonderful.